This is part four of section 1.6. We're now going to talk about equations with rational exponents. As a reminder, a fractional exponent, the denominator tells you the index of your radical and the numerator tells you the power you're going to raise it to. It does not matter whether you take the root first and then raise it to the exponent or if you raise it to the exponent first and then take the root. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Now, the way we work these is we're going to isolate the expression with a rational exponent. So we're going to get the part with our fractional exponent completely by itself. But then we have to be careful because if the numerator is even or odd, whether it's even or odd, it determines how we work the problem. If m is an even number, then what we do is we're going to rewrite this with the plus or minus the number equal to the reciprocal of what this exponent is. So here I have x equal to m over n, and I'm going to write it. It's going to be x is equal to plus or minus k to the n over m. I have to use the plus or minus because m is even. It works the same way if m is odd, except I don't have to worry about a plus or minus. Okay, so let's look at this problem first. I want to get this x to the uh, 5 thirds by itself. So I'm going to move the 24 over to the right. 8x to the 5 thirds is equal to 24. Now divide both sides by an 8. And I get x to the 5 thirds is equal to 3. Okay. Now the numerator here is odd, so I do not have to worry about a plus or minus. I get to write x is equal to 3, take the reciprocal of this, 3 fifths. So this means it's the fifth root of 3 cubed, which is the fifth root of 27. And that's your answer. Okay, so let's do x minus 4 to the 2 thirds is equal to 16. Okay, I have something raised to a fractional exponent and that something is by itself. Now it's more complicated than just an x, but it is still by itself. Now this number is even, so I have to worry about a plus or minus here. This is going to be equal to x minus 4 equal to plus or minus 16 to the 3 halves power. Okay, so this means x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 to the third power. The square root of 16 is 4. So I have plus or minus 4 to the third power. 4 to the third power is 64. Okay. And now if I move the 4 over to the right, I have x is equal to 4 plus or minus 64. So I have 4 minus 64, which is negative 60. And I have 4 plus 64, which is 68. So my two answers are negative 60 and positive 68. Okay, so let's look at some problems that are called quadratic equations that are quadratic in form. Now, generally, what this means is that they are technically not quadratic equations but we are able to make a substitution and force them into a quadratic form. Okay, generally speaking, what you're looking for is to have the same thing raised to powers in this spot and in this spot. So here it's x and x, here it's x plus three, x plus three, doesn't matter. We want the same thing there and there. And then I want this exponent to be doubled this exponent, whatever it is. So four and two, it could be six and three, it could be 20 and 10, just so long as that this one is twice this one. This exponent here is a one, it's doubled to a two, it works. Okay, 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to make your substitution. Now, traditionally, we use the lowercase letter U for substitutions. What you want to do is you want to let your U stand for whatever is right here. So my U is going to be X squared. Now think about it for a second. If I square both sides here, I would have u squared equal to x squared squared. I get to multiply those exponents together to get x to the fourth. So right here, this is the same as u squared, and this is the same as u. So now I'm going to rewrite these with u and u squared instead of x squared and x to the fourth. So that's u squared minus 13u plus 36 equal to zero. Now I'm going to solve this for u. All right, two numbers that multiply to a negative, uh, to a positive 36 that add to a negative 13 would be negative nine and negative four. So this factors as u minus nine, u minus four equal to zero. Setting each of these equal to zero and you would get u equals nine or u equals four. All right. Well, if you recall from the beginning of this section, we should expect to have four solutions here. And we were asked to solve for x, not for u. We've done the hardest part here. We, we have u, but now we need to undo our substitution. These are just like band-aids. They make it look a little bit better for a while, but we always have to undo them. So now that we know what u stands for, I plug in x squared in for these u and I solve these. So I have x squared equals nine, or x squared equals four. Now I have two square root property problems here. Take the square root of both sides, putting in the plus or minus. So I get x is equal to plus or minus three, or x is equal to plus or minus two. I get four solutions, which is what I expected to get. I have negative three, negative two, positive two and positive three. Those are all of the solutions. Okay, now here, I have something that is quadratic in form. I have the same thing here and here. This exponent, this exponent is twice this exponent, so I'm good. I'm gonna let my u stand for x plus three. So if this is u, this is u squared. So making that substitution, I get to write u squared plus seven u minus 18 equals zero. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 18 that add to a positive seven would be a positive nine and negative two. So this factors as u plus nine, u minus two equals zero. And then when I set each of these equal to zero, I get u equals negative nine, u equals two. Okay, now just like in the previous problem, um, I need to undo the substitution. So I need to take this x plus three and plug it in right here. So either x plus three equals negative nine or x plus three equals positive two. So let's subtract three from each side here in both places and you get x equals negative 12 or x equals negative one. So your two solutions are negative 12 and negative one. If you think about multiplying this out you're going to get an x squared right here, and that's gonna be your largest exponent in the whole thing. So we should get two answers, and we did. Okay, now let's try this one. This one's trickier. If you think about multiplying this out completely, this is gonna be squared here, so you're gonna have an x to the fourth. I expect to get four answers out of this. I have the same thing here and here, this is an understood exponent of one, this is two. So my substitution, I'm going to let my u be x squared minus two x. So my u squared is 
x squared minus 2x squared. So this is u squared minus 11u plus 24 equals 0. Now if I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 24, positive 24, and add to negative 11, negative 8 and negative 3 are going to work. So this factors as u minus 8, u minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, u equals 8 or u equals 3. Now I need to undo the substitution. So I have x squared minus 2x is equal to 8, and I have x squared minus 2x is equal to 3. Now I have quadratics here, so I need a 0. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 8 and add to a negative 2 would be negative 4 and positive 2. So I get x equals 4 or x equals negative 2. Now I'll do more or less the same thing here. I need to subtract 3 from both sides. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 3 that add to a negative 2 would be negative 3 and positive 1. So this factors as x minus 3, x plus 1 equal to 0. Now if I set each of these equal to 0, I get x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. So I have four solutions, which is what I expected because like I said in the beginning, if you square this term out, you get an x to the fourth and that's going to be your largest exponent overall. So your four answers are negative 2, negative 1, 3, and positive 4.